Thank you for joining me, Josh. Uh, Donald Trump is spending the night in Trump Tower and is expected to appear in court tomorrow. Tell me about how this entire circus is playing out in the US. We are talking about a former president being targeted by an activist DA with an unprecedented attempt to revive a misdemeanor for falsifying business documents, uh, which would be a mis misdemeanor that, that expired years ago. I mean, this story is, is astounding on so many different levels. Rita, you said it. I mean, honestly, I, as a former lawyer myself, I mean, I don't even know where to start as far as trying to unpack the various levels of insanity that is Alvin Bragg's decision to try to get a grand jury and successfully get a grand jury, I should say, to indict former President Donald Trump on what appeared to be roughly 34 counts. We will learn the formal number at the arraignment. So as you said, first of all, it is a misdemeanor under New York state law to falsify business records. But there is a two-year statute of limitations built into that, meaning that <laughs> if the so-called hush money payment to Stormy Daniels was in 2016, the statute of limitations would have had this crime or the prosecutable nature of the crime expire in 2018. Second, of all, Alvin Bragg, who of course is a George Soros funded prosecutor, he took a million dollars or more from Soros funded networks in his race for district for district attorney, which he obviously won. He's trying to get the misdemeanor to be a felony by saying that the falsification of business records was in furtherance of an additional crime. But the additional crime is federal United States campaign finance laws. Now, two things stand out here. One is there is also a statute mm. of limitations problem. That crime has a five-year statute of limitations. So same thing. It would have expired <laughs> yes. in, in 2021. Second of all, you have the obvious glaring problem that a first-year law student here in the United States could easily tell you, which is you have a county district attorney trying to get in the weeds of a federal crime. None of this holds up to scrutiny whatsoever. That can be easily explained by the fact that Alvin Bragg's predecessor as the New York County, New York DA, Cy Vance Jr., who himself is a partisan Democratic hack, Cy Vance Jr. looked into this and then said, you know what? There's no there there. We're not going to pursue this. But Alvin Bragg, he has decided to pursue it. So it's a total, total crap show. I'm not sure how else to say it. I mean, it is exacerbating America's already deeply, deeply fraught political tensions, and it's not good. I'm not sure what else to say. It is very, very, very bad. Well, you've already got uh, major issues there with trust in the democratic process, and now you're going to have major issues with trust in the justice system. I mean, this is... Uh, uh, the co long-term consequences of this are really quite dire. We might be looking at it now, and I'm sure Democrats will get a thrill out of seeing uh, Trump fingerprinted and if there's a mugshot or there's some sort of a humiliation that they can, uh, uh, you know, get their jollies off on. But they have to think long-term, and, and, and to think that this isn't going to come back on them I think is very naive indeed. And Trump's already raised $6 million off the back of this indictment, uh, largely from small donors. And that seems to confirm, Josh, this notion that uh, this whole ordeal can actually help him become president again. Right. So two things to unpack there. The, you know, the first part of what you said, I mean, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. And what I have been saying in my columns and my podcast for a long time now is that from a conservative perspective, the only way out is through. The American left, really the global left, mm. but, you know, I, I focus on the U.S., the American left has weaponized the rule of law. They are doing it at this point nakedly, unabashedly, out in the open for the entire world to see. The only way possibly out of this is to correct and balance the pendulum from being so far, so far wildly off balance. And what that means in practice is the American right giving the left a little bit of its own medicine, a little bit of a tit for tat, Absolutely. and its own its own version of prosecuting its own political enemies within the confines of the rule of law and within, within the confines of prudence and reason. So what that means in practice this is you know, here you have Manhattan, which is an 85 to 90 percent Democratic Party voting jurisdiction, as bright blue as it gets. Well, how about, you know, some grand jury in the Oklahoma panhandle or West Texas decides to trot out Anthony Fauci mm. or Hunter Biden to answer for, for a crime? I mean, it, that sounds frivolous, but it's really not. At this point, the left has gotten so far ahead of its skis, the right has to do something just to try to balance it out. Now, to your latter point, I absolutely agree that this is at a bare minimum a short term boost for the president. We call it here the so-called rally around the flag effect, where you see 
you know, someone who was wounded. People have a natural reaction to kind of rally around the person who was wounded, who was a martyr. I'm not so sure how long that boost will last. I'm not sure that, that, that this will matter by the time the Iowa caucuses come around next February. That's 10 months from now. It's a very long time. Of course, Trump is also under investigation in Georgia for post-2020 election, possible interference, mm -hmm. and there's various other federal possible uh, investigations pertaining to January 6th and the whole Mar-a-Lago raid classified documents. So there's there yeah. could potentially be a lot more there. But it, yes, in the short term, he's raised a lot of money and the short term boost in the polls appears to be very real. Now, well, let's talk about uh, Trump's main challenger, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Uh, how's he responded to the charges against Trump? Sure. So initially speaking, you know, it's it's, it's kind of funny, Reed. So I, I live here in Florida. So I, I live, uh, you know, uh, uh, barely over an hour from Mar-a-Lago. Um, I've met Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis. I'm, I'm kind of in the middle of the action here. And it's kind of funny for me to have <laughs> seen when the news of this indictment first broke, when Trump himself broke it on Truth Social, you know, his surrogates on Twitter very quickly kind of gravitated to, oh, how will DeSantis react? You know, it very quickly became a story about DeSantis, not a story about this rogue, lawless prosecutor, Alvin Bragg, or about the reality, like you said, that a former president of the United States could shockingly and appallingly be in handcuffs with the mugshot. So initially, after about 48 hours passed and, you know, he had time to process it at a press conference, DeSantis first addressed this from a reporter in a fairly impromptu setting at a press conference, and he basically said that Florida, quote, will not get involved in the process. And most recently, after the indictment leaked, I think it was to CNN initially and became official this past Thursday, DeSantis went on Twitter and he had a fairly long tweet where he said, quote, Florida will not assist in an extradition of Trump mm. to New York State. Now, that's a moot point. As you said, you know, Trump flew up to New York. He flew up on air, uh, excuse me, on, not Air Force One, on Trump Force One. So he is there in person. He has surrendered <laughs> himself. So there is not going to be an extradition fight. But I think a lot of people in the DeSantis camp, so to speak, you know, are wondering, you know, the governor said that he would go out there, that he will not assist. So, you know, why didn't Trump try to fight this extradition? I mean, he had the governor's backing. He could have probably played it out a little more there. So that's how it's playing out here right now. But again, the boost in the polls for Trump right now is very real as far as 2024 is concerned. I just question how long that will last.